Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I decided we will do a quick basic coverage tutorial here of conveyors and how they work. Now what you'll see here is three separate different setups. First here, this is based off of the uh, small ship chassis. What we have is a medium cargo hold attached by conveyor tubes to a conveyor and then a small reactor on the end. Now what you'll notice here is that all the lights here are yellow, indicating that you have both power and a solid connection on both ends of this conveyor tube. Now if we remove the power, the lights go red. Also if you break the tube, the lights will go red as well. This indicates that you do not have a solid connection and you'll need to check throughout the line to figure out where your breach is. Now this is a larger version, you'll see it's pretty much the same thing. Again, if we break that connection, you'll see how the lights go red. So that is your first indicator that your conveyor system is either active or inactive. Now what we have here is a slew of different items that on the small ship chassis will use a conveyor system. First here is the small cargo container that uses only small conveyor parts. has two points of attachment. Next is the medium, which has two small, one on either end, and then two large, and then two bald faces. This one here you can set up to do a variety of tasks with. You will need to use the appropriate size conveyor tube. As you can see, the large one will definitely not work on that small section. But if you were to attach it here, you could easily convey it over to this large tube. Now next is the large cargo container. As you can see, it uses nothing but large on four of the sides. And it has two sides that use the small. Now, what we have here are two of the most important parts for any conveyor system, the actual conveyor blocks. The small one and the what is considered the normal size. As you can see, you can use either tubes for the normal one, and the small one can only use, of course, small tubes. This is basically your motorized box. It will pull items throughout the conveyor system. Without it, nothing will move, even if you have a solid connection. Now, this here is your connector. It can connect either size tube, of course. Now what you'll have here is this will dock with another connector on any ship or platform, which I've got one set up over here to give you a quick show. As you can see, the uh, X's have gone yellow, indicating that we have a positive lock. So we hit our P for our parking by default, and it goes green. Now this does a variety of things. It will not only move cargo throughout both ships as if they were on a solid connector system, but it will also recharge your batteries, keep you docked, so your ship won't drift off, and of course if you apply thrust, assuming you have enough thrust for the object you're attached to, you can tow it. Obviously for this station we cannot. Hitting P again will disengage it. Now this ship does not have enough thrust to actually break away. Oh, actually, sorry, it does. Alright, so if you have two little thrusters on it, and I do apologize, I had recently modified it after lining it up. If you have two little thrusters on it, you will not be able to break away. Now, when you are going back for it, as you notice, we're kind of misaligned here. That's fine, you just got to get close enough. And once you do, it'll attach itself, sort itself out. That wobble will, of course, die down. and you can dock it again. Now that is a simple process for loading and unloading utility craft, mining craft. Now, back to the other key parts here you'll be using. We have next here is the grinder, only using large as well as the welder. Now this is important because the large conveyor tubes transport everything. The small ones can only transport ore. And I believe ingots as well, but I know ore for certain. I've actually not tested it to see if it would transport ingots. Now the uh, drilling bit here only uses small connectors. So of course on your drilling ship you'll want to have nothing but small connectors and usually you use a medium cargo container. Last here this is a collector and this is an ejector. Obviously the ejector will eject anything out of your cargo hold into space upon command or automatically setting. And the collector is the opposite of that. Anything that gets within two meters of this section here will get sucked right in. 
So if you have any trouble with docking your ship, you might want to consider using an ejector and collector system rather than a connector for docking. All right, well, that covers the basics there, and I hope this was helpful.